Hello and welcome to Patrick's Models and Transport. So <clears throat> this evening we're going to try and keep things short and at least continue with some work on the BR, the Pico BR64 locomotive. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to take the motor off, remove the motor and clean the brushes, clean the commutator. It's a short job. So not very long. We'll then be taking a look at the. We'll be taking a look at the axe cleaning all the axles and uh, and the gears uh, in another video. So let's. We've got everything set out. We have the lighter fluid, screwdriver, a vessel to clean the brushes and things in, and we should get on with things. So <clears throat> in a previous video, dedicated video number one, I was mentioning that the BR sixty four doesn't have that sort of plastic collar between the motor and the chassis of the locomotive which catches in these uh, in these uh, um in the these uh, these uh, the two pegs that catch in these two openings why does it not have it because the br64 has a shorter bodywork compared to the br75 which is, we'll anyway go through this at the end, comparing both chassis. So there is no need to have that plastic extension between the motor and the chassis where the worm screw meets the gears. So there's no need for that, so it can't break. What had happened on the BR75, something had got stuck inside the mechanism, not, not under my responsibility, previous owner. And it had got jammed, and the small p plastic pegs of this extension collar between had broken, and the locomotive was jammed. I repaired everything. I'll do a video dedicated to the maintenance of that locomotive. There are mainly photographs that I took at the time. I hadn't decided to start up to restart my channel again, and uh, I'll make a video presenting the locomotive, opening the chassis. And then loading and and, uh, and putting in in the same video all the photos of the maintenance that I did so, last spring, in spring. Okay, <clears throat> so let's open this. Let's let, let's take the motor off. So to take the motor off, we have to let's get the cradle. And let's see if you're seeing things properly. I think you are. Okay, very well. So, to take the motor off, we have to remove the motor, we have to open this screw here. And this screw has a double function. It holds the motor onto the chassis, and it also holds the brush housing onto the motor body, onto the motor bell housing. So, once we... I've done, my ho I've done my homework, I looked up the photos of the maintenance of the BR65. So we go in here and we open this screw. Here we have to be careful because we'll probably find some insulating paper. I have to see. I'm basing... I'm expecting to find the same kind of... the same things I found in the BR75. Just fish that out. We'll put these screws, which are the motor screws, in another container to avoid mixing them up with the screws, the, the truck screws, front and rear truck. So there we go. You can see that this is already this is already slackened. It's already loose. So it's very this is a very interesting design because there are no cables in here. No cables at all that can get snagged. Uh, what we have is, that's clever, I'm going to knock them on the floor with my jacket sleeve, that's very good. The contact, the brushes are in contact with the, the chassis, the, con, the pickup contacts, by means of these uh, spring-loaded brackets. These spring-loaded contacts, which are soldered on to the insulation plate. They're soldered on to the cables, which are on an insulation plate. So it's very simple. You just lift this out, and that's it out. And this locomotive is much, much simpler compared to the BR-75. 
the BR75 um, because in the BR75 there was a there was a small plastic plate under here which was a bit of a fiddle to put back in not to say something worse and there was a little bit strip of brown insulating paper which was separating the motor the metal motor bell housing from the chassis instead in this case we don't have it it's not here so we don't need to worry about that that's one thing less to worry about so I'm quite pleased it's easier simpler so simplifies about my life okay we can see in here now that I've removed the motor whoever the old grease is very gunked up it's very nasty dry grease in here so the cases are two either this is original factory grease or the previous owner at one point many many years ago greased the, the, the drive greased the, the gears but the grease in the meantime has gone completely wonky it's no use this isn't this isn't lubricating anything it's kind of whitish grease and not even been lithium grease this by the sniffing it it doesn't really smell of anything it smells of grease anyway uh we'll have to clean this stuff very very well it's all gungy and nasty it's really disgusting okay so that's that's no use we'll change we'll, we'll, we'll have to clean all the gears i won't dismantle the whole chassis i'm not doing that no no way am i doing that i'll clean them using a small paintbrush and uh, the usual favorites lighter food uh, let's get a rag to clean the brushes that's one of those cloth face masks uh, that dreadful things we had to use and wear all the time um, I had some cloth ones for a period but they were they've, they've turned into rags for doing modeling jobs much better use of them <coughs> okay that's past let me all mention it <laughs> okay very well so now we're going to put the chassis we don't need the chassis for the moment there's gonna I'm gonna have to do so here you can see then before we put the chassis out of the road this is the main drive gear it's driven by the worm drive of the motor and then this uh, drive gear connect drives the other gears because there's a gear in each axle typical German over engineered system but very very reliable very controllable at low speeds i'm absolutely very satisfied by the performance of the of the of pico, pico locomo locomotives of this era the only cable we have in here i was saying that there are no cables there is a cable here this is a cable for the, the front lighting the lighting the front illumination there's a head there's head there's headlamps on this locomotive and so we have a separate copper cable it's not in I'm trying to understand if it's insulated or not. It might be insulated. I can't see well. I'm adding. Yep, it's a brown. It's a, a cable. Of course, it's insulated because there's one polarity on the chassis and another polarity, of course, is insulated. Otherwise, it would be a short circuit. And that that is the cable. Oh, I've got too many things in my hands here. That's a cable which powers the headlamps, the other the other pole for the headlamps which headlamps fit in here at the front and those are the headlamp contacts which are right there which also need to be cleaned so there will be a lot of cleaning on the chassis okay now we're, now that we've taken the motor off huh? let's put this light off extra light we don't need that we can see that without the motor the motor is quite heavy it's a heavy motor it's kind of front heavy it's top it's sort of tilting forward because all the weights here on the pickups okay so chassis can go out the road let's see what you see because i have the usual problem okay we can keep the chassis here in view and now we're going to open the motor and see what state the brushes are in and what state the commutator is in okay so uh, we don't need that we need the screwdriver and uh, the best thing to do now is just to open the brushes. Here's the brushes. 
brushes have, the brushes have got carbon brushes have got a kind of V notch in the back which holds them in place so there are no spring loaded um, spring loaded uh, brush holders that the springs can shoot through the room and get lost forever and ever like for example on a Lima uh, G type Rainfield motor or a Hornby Rainfield motor we saw on the previous one of the previous videos uh, on the Jouef motor you unscrew the brush holders and uh, but the, the springs are actually inside the brush holders and they're fixed inside the brush holders and they can't come off this is a very good system because all we need to do is to lift these we, if we wanted if we wanted to change the brushes without opening the motor all we have to do is lift the spring move it to a side and then take the brushes off but in our case we're not going to do that because we're going to actually open the motor to get to clean the commutator and see what state the commutator's in so very practical i've already marked this because i like to maintain of course the the motor is like a mirror image there isn't a there isn't really a top and a bottom but we can see that here in the factory they've marked the bottom with a white dot of paint and i have marked the top on the metal housing with a t for top so we know and an arrow pointing up the way so we know what sides what which side is which on the motor so one screw fixes it to the chassis and also fixes the brush the, the frontal assembly to the to the bell housing the other screw which is shorter just does this so as usual 10 marks out of 10 for pico i like working on these locomotives because nice and easy not complicated see this screw this screw is much shorter because this screw here only fixes the brush the frontal brush assembly of the motor to the bell housing so we just stick that in there in the road and we can now pull this out prise it apart gently very gently we don't want to lose any bits and pieces and we want to make sure that nothing is lost okay the brushes fell out of their housing that's a small ah that's the that's the nut i wonder where that came from oops okay there's always some surprises here huh? there's always a surprise okay this we have to be careful not to lose this is a washer it stays there and even on the the motor of the br the ident it's got an identical motor the br75 so that mustn't get lost the commutator is absolutely filthy it's disgusting and even the brushes are absolutely very 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 dirty now let me see where this boy here belonged to okay no no bother then this this nut sits oh the other one they both fell out so these nuts here these two nuts sit in a slot right right there and ah, they pop in this way from the side outside okay i hadn't seen them i hadn't seen them they sit in there like that and they're caught in position and they they hold when you screw put the screws through here the the hold the motor in position so we can take them out put them away we don't want to we don't need them for the moment okay let's see what state the brushes are in this locomotive's worked quite a lot quite worn down brushes this locomotive worked a lot more than the br75 the green one this locomotive has been used the commutator was dirty even on the br75 but not so dirty and you can see it's all full of lines it's all lined it's been is this is a locomotive that's worked a lot now let me see how i can if i can pull this out somehow i can't that's right you can't really take it out you can't take it out you can't pull it out because it's held in position here by this bush here so that can't be done and uh, i don't want to risk plastic you never know things can get broken and uh, better just keep things keep things as they are so we'll actually go in because when i clean 
This is a ring field type motor. I always like to clean the inside of the magnet as well to make sure that there's no debris and dirt and things and everything's running nice and smoothly. So let's take this small Bakelite, uh, is that Bakelite? It looks like Bakelite to me. This looks like a sort of Bakelite or cardboard, no it's a cardboard washer. We'll take that off and put it away in there, out of the roads. And now we'll give the whole thing a bit of a clean. Let's see how we're going to do. Because we have to clean anyway in here, this is this will also be dirty. Then, then we'll also lubricate it. We'll lubricate here, we'll put a spot of uh, my usual mix of grease, uh, grease, uh, um, technical petroleum grease uh, and uh, and I'm a bit tired now, and sewing machine oil in here and also in the bearing up here. So that's our usual job. So let's get it cleaned up. So first things first, we'll stick the brushes into some lighter fluid to give them a clean. Uh, bought another tin of lighter fluids, that was low. So we're okay. Scoosh some lighter fluid in there. Take the brushes, drop them in there to give them a good clean. Remove any traces of debris. And now we'll just take some, we'll shut that, not to have it evaporating lighter fluid all over the room. Oh my, the dirt in there is something quite, it's quite something. Okay. And uh, I see that we're getting on quite well with the video. Let's move that out of the road. Okay. Right. Where will we begin? We'll put that there to steep. We'll begin with a commutator because this is yuck. Let's see how much dirt comes off the commutator. We'll just keep this here handy so we can see what I'm doing. And let's give the commutator a clean. Oh my. The commutator is extremely dirty. Ooh. Ooh. But this locomotive works. It was running. It was a runner. A bit stiff at the beginning when I got it, but it was a good runner. It's a runner, but of course you can't run a locomotive in these conditions because they'll, they'll just end up wearing it down and wear and tear. You have to take things out and give them a good clean. So there we go. Here's the brass. The brass commutator plate is starting to show up again. That's very nice. Some people use tea cut uh, or metal polish on these as well. I honestly find that lighter fluid does the job. There are other other YouTubers who use uh, brass wire, rotating, rotating brass 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 brush. I don't know. I'm not too keen on doing that because you're anyway working with delicate stuff. And I mean, I'm not in a hurry when I'm doing these things, so nobody's chasing me. So I quite like to take my time and do a good job. I think we're going to have to change the cotton bud because it's looking a little bit filthy. To be, to be quite euphemistic to say that it's filthy. It's absolutely mean. Okay. Right. Keeping my time. Okay, that's for the bin. Let's get another one. Okay, now that was the first cotton bud. And uh, we've, uh, we're just cleaning this motor tonight. We're not doing anything too complicated. Just do the cleaning, get it ready, and tomorrow I'll make another video where I'll lubricate this motor and get it back in service and running order. It's been... Finally, a Saturday would have not been working. No work, no weekend work. No, no students. Peace and quiet. But we were out and about today. Did various things we had to do outside. The afternoon it was raining. Then the sun came out. Beautiful rainbow over Padova. 
course I couldn't take a picture because I was driving the car and uh, in a, on the whole a nice afternoon but a bit tiring so I'm just keeping things short and then I'm calling it a day oh, that's much cleaner Right. Okay, doc. That's nice and clean. Now, what we'll do? Very important. We have to clean the segments, the 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 the, seg the, the spaces between the segments of the commutator because they get very very dirty. All sorts of, and this was a very dirty commutator. So these have to be cleaned, and we also have to clean here. But we have to be very careful not to damage any. Not to damage if there's the, any soldering of the winding or anything. You have to be very, very delicate when working with these things. It's a job that mustn't be done. Must be done with great caution. Yes, this could do with a wee polish. With some, I've got some Duraglate brass polisher. I could use some of that. In the meantime, I'm cleaning it like this. Maybe tomorrow we could have a go at it with the duraglate. But generally, lighter fluid does the job very, very well. I mean, this part will get dirty anyway. Ah, huh? it's not as if it's going to stay spotlessly clean. It's got some lines on it from wear and tear, because of course the brushes rub rub against the sections of the commutator. Okay, I've managed to get rid of the filth. Right, let's take a toothpick because I don't believe in using anything metallic to clean the sections. Because metal, you can easily, with metal, slip with a pin or a needle or something. And the next thing you know is you've scratched your commutator and then the trouble begins. So we'll just use a toothpick, dabbed in lighter fluid, clean clean the dirt off on a rag or a tissue paper in this case I'm using a rag and I'm cleaning out the sections you can see that there's dirt on there so that was one now we'll go and clean the other one dirt is, is residue from the brushes dust from the brushes the brushes wear down and so of course the dust goes all over the innards of the motor so we can see that it's much, much cleaner now. Okay. That's nice. I've got two pairs of specs on to see what I'm doing, but... There we go. There's some dirt that came, came out from the sections and the spaces so we have to clean the commutator plates again to make sure that they're nice and clean there's no gunk that came out of those slots okay and that's good that's quite nice i think we'll polish it up another bit dab some more lighter fluid on this cotton bud there's no more dirt coming off, which means that our man is nice and clean. So we'll clean the rotor, the rotor axle, we'll give this a clean as well. So there's no dirt on that. Because on a well-born motor, the dust, the brush dust goes everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, now I did that. Now we're going to have to try and get in between the to clean out the 
Sticky, I can't take this out. This is the advantage of the Lima. Lima motors are fantastic because you just pull everything out, clean it very well, easy, no problem. So uh, let me think a minute of what I'm going to do here. Of course, I've got my hands filthy now. You can see it's really dirty. It's proof that it was really a very, very dirty motor. Well, let's see. No, this is not going to come out. This is not coming anywhere. And this is not unclipping. Okay, we'll just go in there and very gently, being very careful not to damage the windings, we'll actually go inside and clean it. And I think we're going to use one of these. These perfume strips. These are very good because they can go in, do the job, they, they absorb the, the lighter fluid. Let's see if it fits, if I just pop this. It needs, needs trimming a little bit. I'll just tear a bit off. Okay. Not getting the scissors. <laughs> I can't be bothered. Let's just do it like that. That's fine. So we'll just steep that in some lighter fluid. Mm, quite different than the perfume from the shop. So we'll just go in there and just turn the motor round. Let's see if we can just get this job done by turning the motor round. And that's cleaning the insides of the magnet. Oh, we might even just use this paintbrush. This is an old paintbrush I use for doing for doing dirty work like this. And we'll go in there like that. Wet inside the magnet. Make sure that we get rid of any dust that's in there, you see. Okay. That will clean anything out. I'm having a look at the the top surveying. It's not really very dirty. It's actually quite presentable. Let's see. Just moving over side bit by bit so that we make sure that it's clean. Generally, this is never really very dirty. Because the dirt gathers, all gathers on the commutator. Okay, let's just pop this in. We'll just run that around like that. Okay, seems to be okay. Let's have an extra spot of light. No damage to the windings, the windings are in perfect condition. Okay, very well. So I think that's good to go. Okay. Right. Seeing we're at it now, seeing we've got the brush out, we will, uh, let's clean the brushes. Let's fetch the brushes out of here, one at a time. We'll give them a clean with a cotton bud. This is quite acceptable. Oops. Oh, dirty mark these. Okay. Take the other one out. at the back and we'll just use the other end of this and that way that's nice and clean oh shiver let's get that back out of here I'm sitting here being proper using tweezers instead of using my fingers okay that's very nice and then okay that's one that's the other one that's nice and clean what I always do, I've got a bit of paper here, 
and just give the brush head, the face of the brush, a bit of a clean on a bit of paper to polish it up. That's nice. That's one. Let's do the other one. Same job. Which is exactly what I did with the light bulbs. The light bulbs had very dirty oxidized oxidized the contacts. I polished up the sides, the the brass part, the brass contact with the lighter fluid, and then I cleaned the contacts by rubbing them on a piece of paper. Okay. I might be just telling people things they already know, but why, why not repeat something? So I'm popping these brushes in here out of the road. We don't want to lose the brushes. The brushes are in there out of the road. Now we'll take a brush, this paintbrush, and with a lighter fluid, we'll clean. We'll get rid of all this disgusting gunk that's on this, on this worm drive. This is really very, very dirty. I'm seeing if I can melt the old grease using lighter fluid. Seems to be doing the job. Looks very good. Very important to get rid of the old grease because you can use contact spray as well for these things, but this is really very gunked up. Okay, seems to me that's much, much better. Much cleaner. Okay. Get rid of all the nasty grease. Let's just leave that there. We'll wipe it on the rag to make sure that it's nice and clean and dry. And there we are. Nice clean worm drive. No dirt at all. Now, what we'll do, I'm pulling this, I'm sort of pushing the the motor drive axle, the axle forward, I'm cleaning with a spot, making a spot of lighter fluid go in here to clean the bearing, which is bone dry by the way, because then the bearing will be lubricated with a micro drop of uh, my mix of technical petroleum jelly and sewing machine oil. Now you can feel that it's really very, very dry. It would be if I ran this motor now, it would screech and howl and make an absolute mech, an absolute fool of itself. Okay, very good. That's nice. That'll evaporate overnight. I'm not letting all the cleaning fluids and everything evaporate. We don't want to assemble things. Yes, it is a bit on the. You can see it's a very, a very used motor. This motor worked plenty because they're small. There's uh, small lines on it. It's, uh, it's 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 not scratched. It's just it's just worn down a bit it's by the rubbing of the of the brushes. But it's not really dirty or anything. It's not oxidized. It's clean. It's okay. Okay, now that's nice. That's okay. Right. So we finished with that. So we just leave that on the table like that. We will now proceed to cleaning the inside and the contacts uh, here in the brush housing. So let's get another cotton bud. We still have lighter fluid in here. And there's lots, I don't know if you can see it, there's plenty of brush dust in here. So this is quite a dirty place, as you can see. Quite that, quite dirty here, quite filthy. So what we have to do, see, small drops of, small specks of uh, brush dust. We're going to get some more here and just clean it up, clean it up well. And we don't want to get any strands of cotton in here because that wouldn't be a good idea. Then they go on the commutator, they go on the winding and make a mess. But on the whole, it's nice and clean. I think we're going to use the brush. Uh, we're going to have to put some lighter fluid in here. We're running out of lighter fluid, but this is a kind of dirty. Hold on. Oh, let's push that in the bin. Okay, let's just do this. So there's some dirt in the bottom of this. Right. That was a dirt. That's a dirt off the brushes bin. 
Okay. This is for the bin. This is also for the bin. That's some more rubbish for the bin. Okay. Put another spot of light of lighter fluid in the small in here. Not too much because I'm nearly finished. I don't want to waste the stuff. Okay. Keeping my eye on the clock. Try and keep things as short as possible. Okay. Now we'll finish. We'll just take the brush and we'll give that a little once over with a brush to melt any other dirt that might be still lurking around here in this brush holder assembly of the motor. Hmm, it's okay. Another of these. Oh, that's much better. Much, much better. That's really good. Okay. Now, what I want to do now, let's see what state the contacts are in. Uh, the contacts, this locomotive must have stayed in a, in a damp cellar for a long time, because everything is quite oxidised. The BR-75 was in much, much better condition. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my scissors, I'm going to cut the head off this, off one of the cotton buds, this one, which is dirtier. And this way we'll have a stubby paper. This is made of cardboard. So we can just wet that. This is what I use for cleaning for cleaning the motor bearings and brush holders. We'll just stick that in there and we'll give it a clean like that to make sure that it comes nice and clean. Okay, no dirt. Then we'll go into the into the motor, into the brush holders, and see what dirt comes out of the brush holders. Some dirt. Another spot here like that. Okay. And I can just rub that along there, and that'll clean the contacts. You see. And it seems to me that to be all quite okay. It's acceptable, it's clean, it's not... Let's have a look with a spot extra light. Hmm. Acceptable. It's clean anyway. Not shiny, but it's clean. Okay, put it that way. I'm just going to go with a brush as well, just to really wet them properly. Give them a good clean like that, and then we'll just get we'll cut another bit off this. Okay, let that steep a bit. We'll go in here and give it another clean. There we go. that and give it a kind of polish up okay that's quite nice I think that's more than enough no problem we'll bin that more stuff for the bin okay so this is ready for reassembly but we're not going to reassemble it now because before reassembly we have to we have to get it uh, what we, last thing to do last but not least we'll give this washer a wee clean because this was really dirty right in the middle of the commutator and that is kind of dirty so we'll just take brush give it pass it around in a bit of lighter fluid and that's us that's more than enough we can now fish it out. Put it on this piece of perfume sampling blotting paper. Give it a clean. Rub it up and down. 
get rid of the filth. That's much better. Oops, okay. So there's a shiny side and a matte side. There's matte and shiny. The shiny side was up the way. Matte in contact with the commutator. So we'll just pop this in here and keep it for tomorrow, ready for reassembly. Okay, so we finished that job. Fill some lighter fluid in here. Anything else to clean? Clean the wheels. These wheels, mentioning the wheels, the other day I cleaned the wheels and uh, had a good clean at the wheels off camera. They were really very dirty. The, the truck, the pony truck wheels were really, 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 really filthy. The leading truck and the pony truck. There are still some traces of dirt on here that don't want, that, that don't want to come off with lighter fluid. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use in particular on this one. This is the front. This is the leading truck. You can see there's some black dots on there, on that wheel. And uh, I looked at it through my watchmaker, watchmaker eyeglass. Uh, and uh, yes, it is dirt because with a toothpick it comes off. So what I'm going to use, and we'll do it on camera, the fiberglass pencil to clean that. Uh, fiberglass pencil, which I always say it's always better to use it wearing gloves because those little strands of fiberglass are just perfect to get them in your fingers. So I had one in this finger for over a month and eventually there's a special kind of ointment that smells of tar called the uh, pomata di tiol or ictiol uh, ointment and that pulls the scalp out and pulls it's very good for wooden scalps of wood metal 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 scalps and so on strands of uh, fiberglass and the like to get them out your fingers and it took some time to get the thing out so we'll do it we'll use the fiberglass pencil wearing a pair of rubber gloves so, <laughs> better, I think we'll throw this in a bin, we don't need to keep out all the rubbish. This is still good, so we can just uh, keep a clean bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. Right, so this is dirty, midden. This one, still okay. Right, so that's enough for tonight. And tomorrow is another day and we'll actually reassemble and lubricate the motor and the, the following video, so let me dedicate, uh, we'll do a video dedicated, a short one only to the to reassembling the motor and then the following video will be dedicated to cleaning, opening the base plate on this locomotive, cleaning all the gears with uh, lighter fluid and a brush and uh, getting the, the wheels were cleaned on episode one, if I remember, don't remember badly, then we'll have to make sure that there's no leftover gunk and dirt here in, on the, in, the, in the con rods and in the valve gear, and clean everything nicely. Maybe the fiberglass pencil might be coming out and useful again. I don't see any rust. I don't see any corrosion. Spot of sewing machine oil on the on the wheel bearings, on, on the corn rod bearings and the, and the valve gear, just to make sure that everything runs smoothly. And then we'll have finished the locomotive, so we're getting on. Right, thank you for your kind attention. If you liked the video, as usual, this is the usual party piece at the end of my videos. Very useful for the channel, give us a like and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Once we get this locomotive reassembled, I'll rearrange, I'll take the, bo the, the, the board out again and we'll actually have a running session with this locomotive and with some other stock that we haven't seen yet. So, thank you again, cheerio, and see you next time. Ciao, ciao, cheerio.